Hi, Tom. Hey, Gordon, how are you? Good, good. Do you want to tell the audience uh, a little bit about who you are? Uh, sure. Uh, Tom Hardy. <clears throat> I'm currently a, a, a professor of design management at Savannah College of Art and Design. Uh, I'm also a design strategist with the consulting business uh, in Atlanta. Um, and formerly, I was the head of IBM design program. I worked at IBM for 22 years, first as an industrial designer, and then moved into uh, into management. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I know the many executives at the dinner table today are wondering, what is this letter that Gordon keeps talking about? Uh, what is this 1966 letter that states good design is good business? To kind of kick us off here, why was this letter created? What inspired it? Well, you know, I uh, given the date, 1966, it was 10 years after the IBM design program was formed in 1956. So I, I think it could have been part of like the 10-year 10, 10 anniversary of the program. But, you know, it, it, it's also uh, part of continual continually evangelizing within the corporation, in this case, on the value of design to the company. And I, I know, you know, uh, he, he was the CEO when I joined the company in 1970. Um, he retired, I think, toward the end of 1971. But I was there for a period of time while he was still at the helm. And... Uh, you know, he and follow-on executives would periodically uh, create some communications that supported not just design, but, you know, key parts of their business. So I think this was one of those. Now, if you notice on that letter, in the upper right-hand corner, it has corporate policy. Now, that's really important because that sends a message to the recipients of this letter, which if you look at the bottom, it's distribution list A and B. Those are the top executives in the corporation. That's where this letter you know, was targeted. And, and within the letter, of course, they uh, he's talking about ensuring that your people you know, understand the importance of design. And um, one of the uh, really smart things that Mr. Watson did uh, together with, you know, Elliot Noyes and Paul Rand and, and, and Charles Eames in the early days was uh, ensure that the IBM design program was part of corporate policy. So there was a separate document uh, in the corporate office that gave the definition of what the IBM design program was, what scope it covered, um, what responsibilities that the program had both at the corporate level, uh, its relationship to the brand, uh, what it could approve, uh, and its relationship to uh, all the other operating units in the world because the corporate design program represented the IBM brand, which was owned by the corporation, not by all the different units. So all that was spelled out in corporate policy. Now. Uh, in, in a company like IBM, uh, when you have a document like that, uh, you know corporate policy are really hard and hard and fast rules, and met they become metrics that you can point to if uh, there's some issues in the company. And you know when I was directing the the corporate program, I sometimes had to use the corporate policy on the IBM design program with some executives to say, we do have the right to do one thing or the other because of our responsibility that's articulated in the company with respect to design decisions which affect the brand image of the corporation, right? That's just not left up to anyone who's a manager or a vice president in the corporation um, because they might be running a large part of their particular business, but they don't own the brand. That's that's relegated to the corporation. So the, the fact that it's corporate policy, again, was extremely important in setting up the program. Uh, 
He also mentions the vice president of communications is responsible for the program. So um, the vice president of communications was the executive that the, the head of the design program reported to in that office. And, and they reported to the CEO. Now, one may wonder, well, you know, in this technology company and design is involved, you know, both in uh, marketing communications and internal communications, um, but also primarily product design. Why wouldn't you report to technology area uh, or develop of development or even marketing? Uh, and I think another wise thing that Mr. Watson and, and Elliot did early on was position design in communications because communications is more of a neutral party. You know, it doesn't have an agenda that the technology folks in engineering would have or that marketing would have. Um, they didn't have a, they didn't have a business driven agenda, in other words. Their, their agenda was communicating the the integrity, the intent, the attributes, the strategy of the corporation and its brand to the, to the customers, the stakeholders, the employees, and, and so forth. And so since design directly uh, related to conveying the image of the corporation, then it made a lot of sense for it to be in communications at the corporate level. Uh, now, I will add that we, it, when I was there, we had 15 design centers around the world, uh, Japan, all over Europe, and the United States, uh, dealing with industrial design and graphic design uh, and this decentralized structure. And because all the products were developed in, in these different locations, those designers and managers uh, they reported uh, to the laboratory director and the technology group and the business group because that's what they supported, that, that organization. Uh, but they had a dotted line to, to the design program office in corporate because they were set up, again, by corporate policy to represent the brand at those locations. Um, and so that was fundamentally the structure so I think you know this letter uh, is putting forth in no uncertain terms that design it has value. It has an executive in charge of ensuring that uh, you know uh, all the activities are in place and uh, make certain that all of uh, the people under these the executives that got this letter understand the importance. You know of design, and it's interesting now that we're in 2022, a couple de five decades later since this letter has been written, a lot has changed. Design has gotten a lot more popularity. Um, the size of design organizations are a lot larger too. What can we learn from this letter, five decades later? Well, I think I think one of the things that uh, important is that there needs to be a design management system. Now you can have design skills positioned in a company. Uh, but you reach it you reach a certain size in a, in, a, in an organization. Uh, obviously it all depends on the context of what the company's doing and how large it is and so forth. But you know typically you need uh, an infrastructure with the design management system. I mean, the program that that I teach at SCAD is a graduate school program on design management. Basically, it's preparing people for those kinds of roles, you know, in a, in a company, which are you know, are leadership roles to ensure that the value of design is is used effectively by the business, fundamentally. Uh, and so I, I, you know, I think that design, uh, you know, in this, in the C-suite, in terms of the C-suite understanding the value of design, uh, I, th I think that that's that's fairly well uh, established now. 
generally. And so uh, it's a matter of having a management system that oversees it, continually evangelizes it, because no matter what kind of in a company, you have to keep talking about it, just like what Mr. Watson was doing with his letter. And, you know, when I was heading the program, you know, at IBM, uh, the design program at that point was about a little over 30 years old, but because it was around 400,000 people in about 160 countries, uh, it's an it organization like that that sets up its own dynamics uh, and people are leaving, people are coming in, people are moving between positions of power. Then as, as a leader in the design business there, uh, you have to keep communicating the importance of it and the value to, to the... Um, so uh, I, 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 I think that that role now has uh, become more important. I mean, when I when I, you know, when I was uh, an, an industrial designer in in the company, ma the man management kind of grew up in the ranks. There was no higher education program like we have today that teaches design management. Uh, at a graduate at a graduate level, one of the other things that's happened, of course, related to that, is that business schools, the major business schools now, have design components. Most of them have design thinking electives that MBAs take. Um, the large management consulting firms, the McKinseys of, of the world, they have design thinking groups within their organizations now and sell design as part of their offerings. Uh, that's a that's a big leap uh, in terms of understanding the value of design to business strategy. So all of design in companies going back to, gosh, the early part of the 20th century when Peter Barron's in Germany, with the electric company called AEG, created fundamentally the first corporate design program where they were doing products and architecture, graphic design, uh, focusing generally just on I, the tying together the visual identity to what it is now, how design is used on a much broader strategic level for um, still identity, of course, but also transforming businesses. Right. And what are your thoughts on that statement? You're saying the design executive role has become more important. And in this room are many of these key executives leading really important companies. What sort of words or advice or insights would you share with them as we try to convene for what this design executive council is? Well, I... I think it's understanding the value of that design can bring um, at a transformational level and at a strategic level, and how can one communicate that uh, within the organization to the right stakeholders and through case studies of successes. So that so that people understand that, you know, design is more than just picking a color at the end of the process or window dressing or, or styling something. It's it's fundamentally, you know, could be solving complex adaptive system problems, for example, where you don't really solve a complex adaptive system. You address it because it's continually changing. But design can can play. A, a role in that because designers think laterally. They come at problem solving through different angles. And so I think you, again, it's continually evangelizing. You can't stop. You can't assume that if design's well established in a company and people understand it, that you can just let it go. 
you, you, you have to constantly talk about it uh, with, within the company uh, across the key players that are the leverage points in the corporation and finding out, you know, what, what will make them a hero, for example. Um, because if they're, if they're, if you make them a hero, then you're a hero because it's going to be successful. So I think there's a lot of management that doesn't make, understand that. And given your experience from design executive to participating in government, what do you see today that might be an opportunity for that bridge? I think there could be a role uh, for design and government uh, and helping with technology transfer uh, into meaningful products and service transformations that that add value. Uh, I know that we we had talked about the, the effort that I was involved in back starting in 1992 with Bill Clinton's presidential roundtable on design, which was uh, the first time that had ever happened. And, and then uh, following that roundtable, there were activities in Washington uh, within Congress to set up a design council in the Department of Commerce. You know, uh, because there was a lot of focus, and there still is, on technology, of course, and manufacturing. And there were a lot of programs that were funding research for all that. Uh, and, and part of the message was, you can have the most efficient manufacturing facilities in the world with robotics, but you need products that people want to buy to fill up the factories. And so design can help within the whole structure of that. And I, I think, it, again, it's having a voice within that infrastructure that's, that's, that's dealing with affecting technology development, technology transfer, manufacturing, because a lot of research grant money, for example, you know, comes through that system. And... Uh, Design should be part of that, should be represented. Because in reality, and product development, for example, design is a key player in that. And so I, I think at the strategic level, uh, in some of the government planning work, design could play a, a really important role in that. All right, Tom. Well, thanks so much for sharing this. Um, I'm sure many of these executives would be delighted to meet you somewhere somehow if we ever host an event with you. So it would be great. Well, thanks for the opportunity and all the best of luck on your session here. All right. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Take care.